As we left at the end of the last video, I was trying to decide how best to machine the gaps in the horn blocks. I'm going to go over to my preferred option, which is to put the frames as a complete assembly onto the milling table and machine the horn blocks accordingly. To that effect, what I've got here is three bits of old bar bolted directly onto the table and with them in position, I've cut a three millimeter slot on both sides, which corresponds to the width of the frames. Because I've machined them on the table and in a fixed position, I know they're all directly aligned. So all three slots on each side are in line with the x-axis. So that means the frames will be held accordingly. With this setup, what I'll do now is I'll put the frames into position with all the stretchers and the buffer beam bolts loose. Then I'll gently clamp it down and tighten everything up. That should give me a high level of confidence that I've got it all nice and square. Just going to vary the focus on the lens so you can see those three bars and the relevant slots. Hopefully that focus will be following my hand. Slot here, here and here. So here are the frames, everything is loose, nothing is tight, so there's lots of flex and movement which is good. And then the frames drop into those slots on those bits of bar I got clamped to the table. When I milled these slots I did actually put a little bit of give in the slots on effectively this side, the back side of the table. So although the centres of the slots are the prerequisite 107mm apart, I've actually opened up the slots a little bit wider on the back, plus or minus 0.1 of a millimetre. So I know that my stretches are not going to be perfect, so I do want a little bit of give again so I don't tighten it all up under stress. It's probably also worth noting that each of the bits of bar with the slot on the table correspond pretty much directly to the horn blocks. So that'll help in the rigidity when I come to machine front to back or side to side for the frames. Off camera I've been working on getting these buffer beams squared up because obviously if they're out the frames are going to twist on one side could be in front of the other. I think I'm there now, so the buffer beams are tight and now I'm going to clamp it down lightly and tighten up all the various stretches. Fingers crossed, we'll have a good assembled chassis for the Loco. After tightening up all the bolts, I've spent a couple of hours off camera just tweaking and making sure that the frames are nice and square if I run a straight edge along the frames, they're not perfect. There are some very slight undulations, but given what the frames have been through with all the cutting, beating, riveting, etc., that's no surprise. I think we're good enough to go. So now I'll just get the clamp in rearranged and I'll come back on camera when I put the cuts through to open up these horn blocks in the centre here. There's very little change in terms of setup. This is pretty much how I clamped the frames to the table when I bolted them all together. So with the end mill now in the quill, I can basically just take a number of small cuts to open the horn blocks out to size. I did say in the last video that when I made the frames, I opened up these gaps for the axle boxes to three quarters of an inch. I've no idea where I got that number from. The spec for the axle boxes is actually seven eighths of an inch. So that would be 22 mil to me. And that's what I opened them up to, or in fact, slightly under. I did leave a little bit of meat to be taken off at this stage. So that makes life a little bit easier. What I'm doing here is I'm actually going completely front to back with each pass of the end mill. This was gonna be a bit long winded. So what I ended up doing was taking the horn blocks down to the specified depth, which I think is an inch and a half. So 38.1 mil in my case and then working on each one independently. So for example, this side, the near side, I'd open that out to 21.8 millimeters and then go onto the far side and open up that gap to 21.8 millimeters and then do a single finishing cut to the right dimensions at 22 mil front to back and then back to front on the other side of the horn. And here I am doing that finishing cut. With 
With this one done, it was very much the same for the other two. And because the frames are clamped onto the table in such a way that I don't need to reposition them to enable me to get to the other axle center lines, I was able to use the DRO to accurately get to the centers of the other horn blocks. All the horn blocks are now machined and fortunately the trailing set is slightly larger. I had to open them up to 22.5 millimeters because I had a bit of a problem, but the leading and driving ones are 22.2. Whilst I've got the frames in the milling machine, there is no escape from drilling and tapping of holes as I need to do just that for the horn stays. In the bottom of each horn, I need to drill and tap four or five BA holes. So I'll get on and do that now. That's mundane stuff, so I won't bore you with the details, but I will finish off this video with a picture. And as always say, thanks for watching.